Guys, as you know, uh, we're approaching 2 o'clock here, so we are going to have the team uh, from Umbria on, and uh, woo, they're there. Guys, You get, looks like you got haircuts too. How are we doing today? Yeah, we're looking fresh today, <laughs> so that's going to improve the brain power with development. Got to keep them similar though, you know, being twins, we have to keep that twin power going. Exactly. Guys, can you just give us a quick kind of introduction about who you are and what Umbria Network is? Sure. We are both developers on Umbria Network. And what Umbria is, is an ecosystem of DeFi innovation, I guess you could say. So the main problems with all of the DeFi stuff we think at the moment is the cost and ease of use. There's a lot of people that want to get in on, on the space but are finding it too difficult. And then there's a lot of people who just can't afford the Ethereum gas prices. So as, as a team, we're trying to get rid of those barriers to entry. So what we've done is we've released an exchange on Polygon, uh, which is very similar to Uniswap, very similar to SushiSwap, but a fractional uh, fee for swapping um, uh, and way faster to initiate a swap. Instead of it taking minutes, it takes just a fraction of a second for the blockchain stuff to happen. Uh, and it's way cheaper, like we said. So what Umbri is doing at the moment is we're developing a bridge where you can move crypto assets securely from one cryptocurrency network to another cryptocurrency network for very, very cheap and very quick and it's super easy as well. So that's gonna be coming out in the next few weeks. That's called the Umbria Nani Bridge. There's a lot of really awesome projects and things going on on different blockchains, but none of these blockchains are really very good at talking to each other. And you might wanna use something on Binance Smart Chain. Um, and then once you've done something on Binance Smart Chain, you might wanna go over to Ethereum and do something else. But right now there really isn't a very quick and cheap way of doing that. So the Nani Bridge that we're building at the moment is gonna facilitate people to be able to move their ERC20 tokens or any Ethereum based tokens uh, any EVM compatible tokens on any of these chains like Binance Smart Chain, on Ethereum, on Polygon, and they're going to be able to move these around really quickly and really easily. Uh, so when we're talking about like DeFi and some other stuff, one of the cool things with you guys is, you know, you don't have to sign up for an exchange or do anything else. It's all you just kind of go to, you know, the Umbria Bridge and you just kind of enter it. And it's almost in a way kind of like what we're seeing potentially down the road here with Polygon, where it's kind of cross chain operational. And for this Narni Bridge, you guys had Umbria and ETH and then Umbria and Polygon or Matic. Uh, is there going to be more pairs of that in the future? Or are those going to kind of be like the two just for right now? So when you have a decentralized exchange, the main thing that you need on that decentralized exchange for it to function seamlessly and properly is a large amount of liquidity. You have to kind of think outside the box on new and innovative ways of um, getting liquidity. Because back in the day, uh, when all this was blowing up, people would just make an exchange, make a funny meme, and people would come flocking. <laughs> but now you really have to be clever with what you're doing. You have to um, prove that you have innovation, and that's when people are going to come. So because we're going to have this bridge that allows people to, with basically one press of a button, potentially move all of their assets from the Ethereum blockchain or the Binance Smart Chain into the Umbria protocol, Cool. That gives us a massive advantage over any of these other exchanges where that process would actually be very difficult. And the thing with the Nani Bridge is that it can be used as a platform for any other innovation on top. So let's say we want to enable people to migrate their liquidity from Uniswap on Ethereum to Umbria on Polygon. Well, we can use the bridge to do that and it'll still be as easy as just a couple clicks with a mouse um, rather than a huge steep learning curve for doing something like that manually. Neil Laverne is asking, what does the time frame look like for the Narni Bridge uh, to be available? We're hoping for the Narni Bridge to be live in two and a half weeks. All the functionality has already been built at a protocol level. So it's now uh, just a matter of us testing it, retesting it, triple testing it. And then when it's ready, we'll release it. There are really two different sides to the bridge that the users uh, could be interested in. The first thing is the actual moving of assets between chains. But there's another side to it, which is sort of an earner for people who want to stake their tokens and earn some APY like they would be used to um, in farming. We're thinking that with this bridge, the, the most likely asset that people are going to be wanting to move at any particular time is going to be a stable coin. And so in traditional like farms and things like that, when you, when you stake your stable coins, you get a very low APY because the risk is very low. And so staking a stable coin compared to uh, staking some really spicy ERC20 token, is, it's just not comparable as far as the APY is concerned. But with the bridge, the APY we expect for stable coins will be the highest of any asset because the stable coins are going to be the ones we think people are going to be moving the most. So if you are a holder of stable coins and you want to farm them, but you realize that the APY is going to be low on most platforms, it's a good idea for you to have a look at the Nani Bridge because potentially the APY for stable coin farming is going to be super high, especially in the early days.
Yeah, and this is a whole new type of farming that we haven't really seen before because it's not the traditional AMM style of exchange that we're doing here with this bridge. It's not um, a traditional farm uh, or a vault or anything like that. So it's going to have completely different um, APY models than you'd see in an exchange. And we're really excited to see how that all pans out because this is so new. No one really knows what it's going to be, but it could be a very exciting opportunity for people who want to uh, put in their stable coins to earn APY. And so we have a question here for Feel the Vern. How many different chains do you envision being supported by the Narni Bridge? I would like every popular EVM compatible chain to eventually be supported. So first, um, firstly, we're going to go between Ethereum and Polygon. And then once that's all working beautifully, we're then going to do Binance Smart Chain as the second choice. And then as we go, we're just going to keep adding more and more EVM compatible chains. So Tony's asking in the chat for Matic specifically, how does this differ from the Polygon Web Wallet Bridge? Well, it's about 10 times cheaper and it's about 10 times faster. Oh, it's way faster than 10 times faster. Mm. <laughs> we've, we've done a uh, power bridge in less than one minute. We've moved assets from Ethereum to Polygon in less than one minute. I remember the last time I used the Polygon bridge, it took hours. Mm. Their bridge is really awesome because it's completely on chain. It uses validators and it's got all the bells and whistles. And that's kind of amazing. What we're doing with our bridge is we're looking at it from a more pragmatic approach. It's a more centralized system. It's more like a, a, an exchange like Binance. You just hand us the crypto with one hand, we hand you the other with the other hand. And it doesn't have any of that over encumberedness of, of a completely decentralized application. Mang is asking, which wallet do you guys support and which coin is required to complete the transaction? Is it ETH? Right now, it will be supported by MetaMask. And basically, uh, we're going to be starting with a couple of tokens for the bridge. The first ones will be uh, Polygon, Umbria, and Ethereum. And then we'll quickly do USDT as well. And then as the community, you know, say which ones they want to be added next, we'll um, go from there. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, and, and for a lot of us, we are providing liquidity right now. Uh, can you kind of explain how that works for anybody that's kind of hearing about Umbria right now? And they're like, oh, hold on, what's like this farming, liquidity providing and all that kind of stuff? What's the steps to go about uh, doing that for Umbria? If you have some cryptocurrency, particularly um, Ethereum and Umbria or Polygon and Umbria, depending on which chain you would like to an interest, you can put your assets into, let's say, for example, uh, we want to farm on Polygon. You would want to get your Polygon and you'd want to get your Umbria and you'd want to use the traditional at the moment Polygon bridge to move your assets onto the Polygon chain. Then you can provide those two um, assets to our exchange um, as liquidity and you will receive a token back uh, as like a receipt for proof that you have put some money into the exchange. You can then put that into our farm. And when you do that, you will receive Umbria every block as a reward for giving that liquidity to the exchange. And one thing that you guys have done before is like an airdrop and a snapshot. Uh, and Shrukan was asking earlier, is that something that you guys are going to be doing again? Or was that just kind of like early stages? Yeah, well, that was uh, an early stage thing that we did a couple of times. And there is a chance that we'll do that again in the future if we feel like there's some kind of uh, marketing campaign that, that would really grow our community around that. Uh, but right now, we feel like our community has gotten to the point where, um, you know, there's some interesting minds in there. We're having good conversations. So we're not really eager to um, pull in as many people as we can and kind of sacrifice um, our technology or, you know, go, go up in a big firework and then come crashing down. We're really trying to um, focus on our core technology, build the community, step Steadily, but quite slowly, um, and just making sure that uh, we go in a straight line and we don't go up and down too much. And we think this bridge is by far the most exciting thing that um, Umbria has ever done. And we think that it's going to lend itself to a whole bunch of really amazing things that are going to come out after it's released in three weeks. Because not only does this bridge facilitate, um, you know, moving from Ethereum to Polygon for now, for example, but it also um, is going to have an API where other projects can leverage this system to create, for example, yearn strategies for vaults. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that this will allow people to do. And so we just had a few people uh, kind of join the chat. Max, Gokina, what's up, guys? Uh, and I asked earlier about how to uh, get like LP farming and whatnot. Uh, but Gokina is asking, how does one get into Umbria in the first place? So if you want to get some Umbria, you can go to our website and click the Uniswap link that's at the top of the page and buy some Umbria there. It's quite complicated. There are links everywhere. And if you need any <laughs> help, we'll be in the Discord to explain it. When you explain it, it becomes apparent like how complicated it is. So it's... You know, the cryptocurrency community is a very smart bunch and they've all been, you know, managing to farm pretty well. But if you need any help, don't worry about that because we all needed help in the beginning. So I'll be there in the Discord to help anyone who wants to start farming.
Just regarding some of, like, the tokenomics and whatnot, can you talk a little bit about kind of the, uh, like, supply of Umbria and kind of, like, how that works? Because, you know, Bitcoin, the whole thing is, oh, there's only, like, X amount of them, yada, yada, yada. And just for kind of, like, a beginner standpoint of people hearing Umbria for the first time, how you guys, you know, chose about, like, the po tokenomics and the kind of whole idea for Umbria. So we started off by minting 5 million Umbria. Um, and we've been using uh, quite a bit of that for airdrops and the bounty program and the bug bounties and things like that. Um, some of the Umbria will go to the founders as well. But there's another 5 million Umbria that is going to be farmed over time. So I think we're up to about 5.1 million umbria in circulation right now but that will eventually um go all the way up to 10 million from the farming rewards love it awesome all right guys well i think we'll wrap it up there i want to thank you so much for taking the time to explain the narnie bridge and kind of what all this stuff is but barney and uh, devoski guys thank you so much for uh popping on today always yeah. a pleasure thank you thank you yeah it's always great all right talk to you soon